Today, I have more than 20 woodworking terms that you must know if you're interested in becoming a woodworker. <laughs> Studies show that 76% of people regret doing things that they could have done, but they did not. If you're interested in starting woodworking, your ideal time to start is now. Because everyone knows that a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Just like a journey to nowhere begins with just one step. Well, today I have more than 20 woodworking terms to help you start and take that first step in your journey to woodworking. All right, the first term is woodworking. Woodworking is the activity of making items out of wood. Whether you're using hand tools, power tools, or a combination of both, if you're making something out of wood, then you're woodworking. Work piece. Your work piece is the current piece of wood that you're working with or it could be a project in which you've already assembled multiple pieces, then the partial project is also your work piece. And a work piece can be of any size or shape. Grain, the grain is the design, texture, or appearance of a piece of wood which is made up of the wood layers or fibers. End grain, end grain is the grain at the top or bottom of a tree or a piece of lumber. Wood fibers look like little microscopic tubes or straws. So when you're looking at end grain, it's like looking down at a bundle of straws. Long grain. The long grain are the wood fibers that are parallel to the length of the tree or the length of the board. If end grain is like looking at the top or bottom of a tree, the long grain is like looking at the side of the tree. Cross cut. A cross cut is any cut that's made going against the grain of a piece of wood. To make a cross cut, you can use various tools. You can use a table saw, a miter saw, a jigsaw, or even a circular saw, and even a bandsaw. You could even use a handsaw. Rip cut. A rip cut is any cut made along the grain of a piece of wood. And again, you can use different types of saws to make a rip cut. Off cut. Whenever I measure a piece of wood so that I can mark wherever I need to cut, I usually make a V with the point being right at the measurement that I need. And then on the piece that's gonna be the waist piece, I'll put an X. That waste piece is called the off cut. Miter cut. A miter cut is any cut made at an angle that's not 90 degrees. So a 45 degree angle, a 22 and a half degree angle, those are considered miter cuts. And a miter cut, and it's usually made across the face of a piece of wood. Bevel cut. A bevel cut is also an angled cut, but it's made across the thickness of a piece of wood. So any cut made at an angle across the thickness is a bevel cut. Compound cut. A compound cut combines both a miter cut and a bevel cut at the same time. So when you use a miter saw, you'll have your blade tilted to either your left or your right at whatever angle you need. And then it'll also be tilted sideways to either side. So that's a compound cut. Kerf, the thickness or width of a cut left behind by a saw blade after cutting through a piece of wood. So as your blade is cutting through the wood, the gap that is being left behind by that blade, that gap is the kerf. Face, the widest parts of a board or piece of wood are the faces. The edges are the sides or the thinner parts of a piece of wood. End, an end is either the top or the bottom or the, the ends of a piece of wood, which are also like the edges, but they're at the top and the bottom side. Square, the term square means something that is at a 90 degree angle. When you're building a project, you always have to make sure that your corners come to a 90 degree angle or make sure that they're square. You also wanna make sure that all of your cuts are square and all of your ends and edges are square to your faces. If something is not square, then you're gonna have trouble assembling and positioning your work pieces whenever making a project. So make sure everything is always square. Although some projects can include different angles that are not 90 degrees or square. In those cases, well then you just follow whatever angles you're using. Joinery. Joinery is the method of joining two pieces of wood together. And there are different types of joinery. I'm gonna mention a few of those. Butt joint. A butt joint is the simplest way to join two pieces of wood, which you just push them up or butt them up against each other. And you can use either glue, fasteners, or both to join those two pieces of wood. Miter joint. A miter joint is when you join two pieces of wood that are cut at an angle, not 90 degrees. For example, in a frame, you'll have 45 degree angles at each corner. So where those two pieces of wood meet at every corner of a frame, it's considered or called a miter joint. Pocket hole joint. A pocket hole is a hole 
that's normally drilled at about a 15 degree angle from one piece of wood into another. What you do is you fasten both pieces of wood with a special screw called a pocket hole screw and it brings them nice and tight together. And that's considered a pocket hole joint. You can use glue along with the pocket hole screws or just the screws themselves. Jig. A jig is a fixture used to position a piece exactly the same every time for repeatable cuts. They increase the accuracy of a tool by making them easier, safer, and faster to use. They extend certain capabilities, allowing you to perform a wider range of woodworking operations. Examples are a tenoning jig, which can be used on a table saw when you have a tall piece of wood, which would normally be unsafe to ride it against the fence going up in a vertical position. So you put it against the tenoning jig and it's secured there properly so that you can safely make your cut. A crosscut sled is also used on a table saw and it's a jig that you use to make safer, faster and more accurate cross cuts. People usually make their own jigs, but you can also buy jigs already made from different companies online or even at stores like Home Depot. For example, one jig that you can buy is the Craig pocket hole jig, which is this one right here. This makes it really easy to drill pocket holes at just the right angle so that you can properly join two pieces of wood. Fastener. A fastener is any device such as a screw, nail, or bolt that mechanically joins two pieces of wood together. Pilot hole. A pilot hole is a hole that you pre-drill into wood before you install a screw. The purpose of a pilot hole is to prevent splitting or cracking of your wood. If you don't pre-drill or make a pilot hole and you just start screwing that screw into your wood, sometimes you'll get splitting or cracking. To get a good pilot hole, what you have to do is make sure that the bit that you use to drill your hole, make sure that the diameter of that bit equals the diameter of the shank of the screw which is the inner core of the screw not the diameter that includes the width of the threads but only the shank in the middle make sure your bit is equal to the size of the shank of the screw to get a good tight bond when you fasten your screw countersink a countersink hole is a conical shaped hole that is made after you pre-drill or after you drill a pilot hole and it's the same shape of the head of a flathead screw so when you put in the screw the countersink hole will make it so that the head of the screw is flush with the surrounding surface or the surrounding wood. Sandpaper. Sandpaper is paper which has attached abrasive particles usually made of different materials such as aluminum oxide, garnet, silicon, carbide or ceramic. Sandpaper is used to scratch away at wood so you can get a smooth and even finish on the wood. They come in different grits such as 80 grit, 120 grit, 220 grit. The lower the number or the lower the grit number, the coarser the abrasive particles are. So the higher the grit number, the smoother the finish that you're going to have. Okay guys, those were my more than 20 woodworking terms that I feel you must know if you're considering getting started in woodworking. By becoming familiar with these terms, it'll help you be able to follow, you know, any videos that you watch, you'll know what they're talking about. I mean, there's so many more terms related to woodworking, but I wanted to start with these basic ones. I can do more videos on more terms in the future. Let me know if you would like that, if that would help you. I'll certainly upload more videos on woodworking terminology. Before I close the video, I do want to show you a clip where we drew our giveaway winner from our very first introduction video. We had a giveaway where I was going to choose somebody randomly, anybody who subscribed to our channel, liked that first video and commented in that first video. We're going to choose that winner now. Okay guys, I'm about to randomly choose choose our winner from our giveaway that we did on our first introduction video. The winner is going to win a mystery woodworking tool plus a crisp new uncirculated gold back note. So here we go. Willow Star. Congratulations Willow Star. You're the winner for our giveaway. 
All you have to do is email us your address and we'll get your prizes out to you as soon as possible. Thank you. Congratulations to our winner. All you have to do is email us your address. Our email is thebunkersubs at gmail.com. As soon as you email us your address, we'll get those prizes sent out to you. Again, congratulations. One last thing, Tanya and I would really appreciate if you all could either in the comment section or via email, send us any of your woodworking tips, tricks, suggestions so that we can use them in future tips and tricks videos if we do feature your tip or trick we will give you a shout out so please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section or email them to us we would truly appreciate it guys with all that said i want to thank you for watching and y'all take it easy over and out